Hey, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. We got two holes here, hole one and hole two. See those starts with two holes? We're gonna start in the front yard. Follow me, let's go. So we're here in the front yard and we got my beautiful moringa trees behind me. They're in year three of growth from seed. So I originally got the seeds from two different people and now they're like that, they're huge. 20 feet tall, big canopies. Coming out of the winter this year, they never lost their leaves. And so we're gonna try for the first time, I'm gonna experiment with you guys and try to root the moringa branch as a cutting and see if I can grow a full new tree from one of the branches of these guys. Let's go check it out. So one of my favorite parts of football, when I watch American football, is to watch a guy get the ball, the running back, and take off running for the end zone, and then one of the linebackers from the other team is gonna take him out and hit him and end the run. And then one of the linemen, one of the offensive linemen, protects that running back, boom, and hits that linebacker, and the running back just gets to keep on going for the touchdown all the way, yes! And so we're gonna use the Moringa kind of as our offensive linemen. We're gonna put these guys in the backyard, as western facing trees that will give a big canopy and shade protection to my peach trees and to my house. So first we're going to do is we're going to try to pick the right branch and I'm going to try to get one that's pretty big and mature. From what I've researched online getting the big mature one will increase my success rate at rooting the cutting and allowing it to grow into a full new tree. So right over here I've got this branch going askew kind of going off on his own. And he looks kind of out of sync with the other branches. He's kind of shading out my orange tree here. So I'm gonna use this one as one of the trees, as one of the cuttings. So I got my loppers here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this branch off right here, where the branch meets the node, right there. And maybe about a half an inch of space. Right like that. And look at how moist that is. Ooh, he's down. Moringa down. <laughs> so this guy's also full of seed pods, bean pods right now. And we got a nice looking tree here. We're gonna do a few things that are gonna hopefully increase our chance of rooting this guy. So stick with me till the end. I'll show you a few secrets I'm gonna uh, implement to try to give me the highest chance of success of rooting this guy in the ground. Next I'm over here under the canopy of the Moringa and this branch looks nice and big and it's pretty straight. So I like the structure of it and it's going out, kind of jettisoning out over my navel orange tree. So we're gonna lop this guy off too. And the cool thing is that look at how I'm walking underneath the canopy of these trees. So my wife didn't want a tree in the back that takes up open area. She wants to keep the flow and keep the feng shui. So this tree we can take out whenever we want. It'll be just a shade tree we can take out whenever. And the canopies of these Moringas get pretty high so that we can walk underneath them and all you gotta worry about is the trunk. So you just walk underneath and the whole family can have a little summertime Phoenix area party with complete shade in the back. So let's take this branch off here. And we got it. So let's take these guys into the backyard and I'll show you how we're gonna do this. When I first started gardening, I was rooting cuttings of different trees, like fig trees and tree collards. And I really didn't want to trim them because I think that the leaves look so nice. But I've learned over time that if you trim the leaves off, then the tree will send more energy into the roots to produce roots. And in the long run, your tree will grow faster, stronger, and more healthy. So we're going to take this guy, we're going to harvest all the Moringa leaves, which are totally edible. And they're superfoods, even NPR. NPR News had an article the other day on the radio about how Moringa is the new kale. And so we're going to just trim off all these branches and turn them into mulch. And then the leaves, we're going to save these guys and dehydrate them and turn them into vegan protein powder that I use in my smoothies. So we'll save that on the side. And see how I'm trimming this? I learned from Greg Peterson, urban farm guy, years ago had a trim about a quarter inch away from the trunk. So don't take up the node and don't go this far. Go about a quarter inch away from the node. And the Moringa always cut so easily. They're like kind of brittle, but they take the monsoon. I've never had one snap in a monsoon. So 
They're like Tai Chi. They're soft yet hard. They're yin and yang. And then I gotta choose which one do I want. Do I want to keep this one or this one? This one, right? Yeah. And I like the structure of this one going straight here, so I'm going to lop off this guy. And then we'll dehydrate all these Moringa leaves. We can even turn these into other trees. So if any of you want to get on my good side and come get a cutting, I got this right now. Don't come to my house and steal my Moringa cuttings because I also know Kung Fu. So now I'm going to take this guy and cut him off at the top and just about right there. And then we'll dehydrate this as well. And so that's going to be our cutting, just like this. And so this is going to be in the hole in the ground, about two feet under the ground. And now what my theory is, is that I'll be starting with a tree that's already about a year old, because this branch is about a year old. And so hopefully that will enable me to have a full grown Moringa tree this summer before the heat hits and it will shade my house and shade my peach trees in the 115 degree Phoenix area heat. So let me show you two more steps we're going to do that will ensure that this cutting roots and turns into a tree. Okay, Moringa 1 and Moringa 2. We got two of these guys. Which one do you guys think is going to make it? Right hand or left hand? Vote in the comments below. If you guys saw my YouTube video from a few months ago, where I planted three Moringa seeds here. I gave them perfect soil, but it was an experiment to see if Moringa seeds that were planted in the fall could overwinter, and I put a plastic wrap around them, kept them warm, and they still died. Um, I stepped on one, actually, by mistake, and the other two got hit by the cold. So we took those out, kept the soil in the ground, so now we have good soil here, and we're gonna plant the cuttings instead, which I think is a better idea. And this is also a nice experiment that you guys get to watch, and. I'll do updates coming up, so make sure to subscribe to my channel and get updates. So one of my secrets when I'm doing tree collard cuttings, I don't know if it's necessary to do on Moringa, but it's gonna make me feel good in my heart to do it, so it's probably not necessary, but pretty, pretty much the roots of this cutting will come out of these nodes. And so the bottom here will become the new tap root that will grow deep into the earth. And so what I always do with a cutting is I just try to take my clippers and just do a little shave, just like that. And I kind of just shave the part that's going to be under the soil. Nothing too crazy, it's a little bit. And for me, I always feel like when I do that, I'm kind of encouraging more roots to grow when I shave it. And I've always had a lot of success with my tree collard and fig cuttings. So we're going to try this with the Moringa. And hopefully this will enable these guys to really go for it and root up nice and grow into healthy, strong Moringa trees that we can harvest the seed pods from, the leaves from, and use for shade. I've got two five gallon buckets full of pond water here and I've got the Moringa cuttings, the branches, soaking in the pond water to soak up all that fish poop. And I've got the azomite rock dust minerals here. I've got small $10 bags of the azomite rock dust at jakemace.com if you guys want to try it out. Go to the gardening link there. I'm going to sprinkle some of that in my hole. And over here as well. Then I'm going to do something that's special and unique to this video. I don't always do this. The Moringa trees in the front yard, I did a combination of sand and worm castings and compost and native soil all together. And I made it kind of on the sandy side because I heard that Moringa's like sand. Those were planted from seed. But since these guys are cuttings, I really want to encourage the moisture to stay consistent and constant in the hole because I want these branches to stay wet, but not drowning in a swamp, but I want them to stay moist and stay wet so that the roots grow out of the trunk. And so I'm going to use a little bit of coconut core in the bottom of the hole just because the coconut core will help to add some moisture retention, but I'm not going to add too much. So just a little bit, just to encourage some moisture retention in my soil. Because whenever I'm rooting grape cuttings, or I'm rooting fig cuttings, or I'm rooting collard, uh, tree collard green cuttings, I always mix a 50-50 mix of compost and coconut core. And this is a peat moss substitute. And in town locally, I get this from A&P Nursery. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that in the bottom of each hole. Next, I'm going to add some compost. This is the locally made compost from Western Organics or Grow Well. I also have some City of Tempe compost I'm going to be adding in this hole in a second. So we're going to add some of that in the bottom of the hole as well. 
Then for proper drainage, I'm gonna add the pumice rock, the lava rock. This will add drainage to our hole and allow the water to drain out, which is gonna encourage a healthy tree that won't get drowned or waterlogged. Okay, now I went to my local nurse and I picked out some of this, from rooting powder. I don't endorse this brand. I don't even know what this brand is. It's the only brand they had at the nursery that's by me. So it's called rooting powder or rooting hormone. And pretty much most rooting hormone is the same. You can put it on your new cutting and it will encourage roots to grow out of whatever you're trying to root. It looks kind of like baby powder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Moringa cutting out of the water, hold it over the hole here, and I'm gonna just tap some of the rooting hormone on the trunk like this so it turns kind of white. You don't need too much, but I'm gonna use more than I usually do because it's a big tree. Then I'm gonna try to mix this up. And stick the tree in there and then orient it the way I want it. And like I said, I definitely wanna have about at least a foot or two feet below the ground. My friend locally, Chad, he's a really good gardener as well, and he told me that he puts his two feet under the ground when he roots him. But I watched an expert on YouTube, she does one foot under the ground, so I figure anywhere from one to two feet will be good. And hopefully that guy will stay up on his own for a second while I backfill the rest of the hole in there. And I'm gonna backfill it with what I dug out, which was a combination of composted mulch, native soil, and I'm gonna add a little bit of compost and mycorrhiza in there as well, which I have right here. This is the mycorrhiza you guys can get from jakemace.com if you want to try it. It's just five dollars and you just need about a tablespoon or two and this is the pretty much the skyscrapers and the civilization and the infrastructure for the microbes. And so you can take the mycorrhiza and sprinkle it on the trunk in the hole and that will encourage the microbe action beneath the soil to explode from the beginning. So it's one of the cheapest ways for five dollars that you guys can do something really special for your trees and encourage that beneficial fungus to bond to the root system of your tree and create a symbiotic relationship that will bring nutrients to your new fruit tree. Or in this case, your new leafy, edible leafy tree. So getting back to our American football analogy, the sun rises behind where you guys are watching from right now and it goes across the sky and it sets over there. And so if you notice my house that's right behind you guys right here, it takes all the hottest part of the western sun in the summertime and that wall gets 200 degrees or more. And so if we grow grapevines up the house to alleviate that heat and the grapevines can take it, they do pretty good. And so now we're gonna have these Moringa trees are gonna shade that western facing sun and they're gonna be the linemen, the defensive line. They'll protect the running back and the quarterback which is a uh, mid pride peach, Ava's pride peach, and a babcock peach. And then this guy is gonna be the defensive lineman for the house. He's gonna grow up big and shade the Arizona native black cherry and the house. And so we're creating a really good defensive line because don't forget that offense sells tickets and defense wins Super Bowls. Okay, we saw that just recently. The Broncos, best defense in the NFL. They won, baby, they won. Um, Cam Newton didn't look that good against the best defense in the NFL. So. We're gonna put our defensive line of Moringa in a strategic place to block and protect our house and our delicious fruiting peach trees. Okay, I'm gonna mix in the native clay and composted mulch that I pulled out of the hole when I dug these holes out this morning. If you guys wanna get Moringa seeds and you wanna try from seed, my four amazing Moringas in the front yard were grown from seed, you can get them at jakemace.com. There's like a $4.50 packet of 25 seeds and Suzanne Velarde at VelardeGardens.com. She grows moringa trees in town from my seeds. She says she gets a pretty good germination rate, like a 70% or 80% germination rate. So 
you get 25 seeds, you should be able to get at least maybe 18 to 20 will germinate and turn into full on trees. And my trees in the front got to 20 feet tall in the first year and a half. When I'm doing the Moringa seeds, I don't soak them in water, I just plant them directly into the soil. We're gonna add in some compost, mix it up with this native clay here. And then we're gonna finish this guy. And now he's looking like he's gonna hold his, uh, his structure upright. The other thing is it's February, February 15th. And so I'm gonna give these guys plenty of time to grow before the monsoon hits. And that way they have a chance to root out and protect themselves against those high monsoon winds. The cool thing about when I dug these guys up is that since I've been layering wood chips for so many years now, I've brought 2,500 cubic yards of wood chips to my yard that Check this out. They were coming off in chunks. There was all kinds of growth happening inside and then when I pull it back, all the white that you see there is not spider webs. That's the mycorrhiza that my yard is producing just by layering wood chips. So when I crumbled these guys back in there, I got my own homegrown mycorrhiza and beneficial fungus that is gonna be so good for building my soil the way Mother Earth does naturally by using a veganic growing method of leaves, wood chips, grass, pine needles, and all kinds of organic matter, food scraps, all that stuff. And then of course, uh, we got three more steps here we're going to do when we're finished. We're going to step back and assess and make sure they look okay, and they look okay. And again, subscribe you guys, because I'll come back to you every month or every couple weeks, and I'll show you the progress. I'll show you guys when they first bud out and what they uh, look like as they grow. So I'm excited for this. I'm also going to dump the bucket of pond water that I had them soaking in, in the hole. And the water is the catalyst that will start the living soil process. So no water equals no life. Yes water equals yes life. It's going to jump start all those uh, bugs in the soil that I can see and all the microbes in the soil that I can't see. The bugs you can see that are beneficial are like earwigs, cockroaches, worms, roly-poly bugs, maybe even grubs and stuff. All the bugs in the soil are all good. They all have a purpose. And they're all helping to fertilize your trees without you doing anything. Okay, I got a little bit of a berm going on in both of these guys on the outside. And I'm gonna just back shovel some mulch and wood chips around to keep the moisture in the hole and to give the bugs and the fungus a more hospitable climate to thrive in. You know, people always ask me, Jake, you know, you're vegan 15 years, vegan. What do you use for your protein? Well, I just eat vegetables. I don't really think about it. The only people who tend to care about where the vegans get their protein from are non-vegans, are the meat-eating people. So if you guys are really anal and stressed out about protein, you can always just powder your Moringa or eat it fresh and put your Moringa leaves dehydrated or fresh inside your smoothies in the morning or as a garnish in your salads or cook it up into a soup. Moringa is one of the best ways you guys can grow a tree that can take the heat. My Moringa's in the front yard. I haven't watered them in about a year, over a year because they've been just existing off of native rains now that they're over two years old. So they're drought tolerant. They uh, provide me a rich source of vitamins and minerals and nutrients and protein and they provide shade from my other trees in my house. They're a super fast grower and they hold up to the monsoon and their roots are a taproot that goes deep. They're not invasive like a mulberry. So all around a great tree, especially for the Phoenix area, anywhere that's hot. Tucson, Phoenix, Southwest United States, Australia, maybe. Africa, hot part of Asia. Do yourself a favor and plant a couple moringas. <clears throat> you will not be disappointed. They're awesome. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure you guys go vegan. At least do one day a week of vegan. Just do like meatless Mondays or vegan Mondays. And uh, from dawn till dusk, be vegan. And also grow the food at home. Because when you grow it at home, you're putting your money into you instead of your money going into the corporations. And you're also giving yourself true medicine in the form of food 
And that's the best way to do it. I'll see you guys next time.